Hello everyone. In today's video, we are going to talk about the respiratory system. So let's start with its function. The main function of the respiratory system is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between the air and the bloodstream. Oxygen from inhaled air diffuses into the blood, while carbon dioxide, which is a waste product of metabolism, it diffuses out of the blood and then certainly is held. The second function is ventilation, which is also called breathing. It is the mechanical process of inhaling and exhaling that moves air in and out of the lungs. It ensures a constant supply of fresh air for gas exchange. The respiratory tract serves as the passageway for air to move from the external environment to the lungs and then back out to the external environment. So structures like the nose, the pharynx, the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi and the bronchioles conduct this air effectively. The fourth function is air filtration, warming and humidification. The nasal passage filters out dust microbes and other particles using their cilia and mucus. Why air is warmed by blood vessels and humidified before they reach the lungs, protecting our delicate lung tissue. Other functions of the respiratory system include voice production, which is a secondary function. We have olfaction, which is a sense of smell. We have acid-base balance regulation and protection and reflex and also we have metabolic and endocrine functions so let's start with the anatomy of the respiratory system so it consists of two main parts the respiratory tract which conducts the air to and fro from the lungs and the lungs which is where gas exchange certainly occurs so the respiratory tracts are divided into the upper and the lower respiratory tracts. So let's start with the upper respiratory tracts. The upper respiratory tracts include the nose, the nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx. The nose and the nasal cavity, air enters through the nostrils and it passes into the nasal cavity where it is warmed, filtered and humidified. Now, tiny hairs called cilia and a layer of mucus trap the dust and pathogens and other particles which we have talked about before. So this is how it performs the protective function. It traps pathogens and dust and other particles from reaching the lungs. Then, number two, the pharynx. The pharynx also called the throat. The pharynx is a muscular passage that connects the nasal cavity to the larynx and the oesophagus. It serves as a common pathway for both air and food. Then we also have the larynx which is known as the voice box. The larynx is located below the pharynx. It contains the vocal cords which produce sounds as air pass through them. It also has the epiglottis which is a flap of cartilage at the top of the larynx. It closes the airways during swallowing to prevent food from entering the lungs. So it actually prevents fluid and liquids from entering the lungs. Now the lower respiratory tract. The lower respiratory tract includes the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles and the alveoli inside the lungs. The trachea also called the windpipe. The trachea is a tube supported by the C-shaped ring of cartilage to keep it open during breathing. It runs down the neck and it divides into two primary bronchi, one for each lungs. And then we have the bronchi and the bronchioles. Each primary bronchus enters a lung and divides into smaller secondary and tertiary bronchi, which then forms further which then branch further to form bronchioles. Now bronchioles are narrow muscular tubes that regulate airflow into the alveoli. And now that takes us to the alveoli. The alveoli at the end of the bronchioles are millions of tiny 
airs are called the alveoli. They are the functional units of the lungs. They are surrounded by dense connection of capillaries. And this is where gas exchange takes place. Oxygen enters the blood and carbon dioxide is diffused out of the cells or the tissues. Then let's talk about the lungs. The lungs is the lungs are two large spongy organs located in the thoracic cavity on either side of the heart. They are protected by the ribs and they are separated by the mediastinum. The right lung has three lobes, the superior, middle and inferior, while the left lung has two lobes, allowing space for the heart. So each lung is enclosed by a double membrane called the pleura. And the space between these layers, which is the pleural cavity, contains a thick film fluid that helps to reduce friction and allows smooth movement of the lungs to expand and contract during breathing in and breathing out. So that takes us to the physiology of the respiratory system. The main function of the respiratory system is gas exchange, which I've talked about before. So it supplies oxygen to the blood and removes carbon dioxide. This, now this is made possible by four key processes, and we are going to talk about them. So number one, we have pulmonary ventilation, which is breathing. So breathing consists of two phases, inspiration and expiration. So inspiration, doing inspiration, the diaphragm contracts and flattens. And the external costal muscles lift the rib cage upwards and outwards. Now this increases the volume of the thoracic cavity and lowers the air pressure inside the lungs, causing air to flow inward. And then we have expiration, which is like the opposite of inspiration. So during expiration, the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles do relax. And then the chest cavity decreases in volume and pressure inside the lungs increases and the air is pushed out of the lungs. So at rest, expiration is mostly a passive process, but during exercise, it becomes active due to contraction of the abdominal and the intercostal muscles. Now number two is external respiration. Now this occurs in the alveoli. Now oxygen from the inhaled air diffuses across the thin alveolar walls into the capillaries. And this is where they bind to homoglobin in our red blood cells. So at the same time, carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the alveoli to be exhaled. Now this process is actually driven by the difference in partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Number three, gas transports. Once oxygen enters the blood, it is carried mostly by homoglobin, which I've talked about before. Now this homoglobin carries this oxygen to tissues throughout the body. Then carbon dioxide is transported back to the lungs in three main forms. We have one, it dissolves into plasma, two, it is converted into bicarbonate ions, and then three, it binds to homoglobin as carbonohomoglobin. Then we have number four, which is internal respiration. This is the exchange of gases between the blood and the body tissues. So oxygen diffuses from the capillaries into the cells and carbon dioxide diffuses and carbon dioxide moves from the cells into the blood where it is carried back to the lungs to be exhaled. So I hope you are getting this process and it is making sense to you. Now the respiratory centers in the medulla oblongata and the pons control the rate and depth of our breathing. These centers monitor the level of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and pH in the blood, and then they make the decision. When carbon dioxide level rises, the brain increases the breathing rate to remove it, and when oxygen levels fall, breathing also increases to bring in more air. So this feedback mechanism ensures that the body maintains a stable 
internal environment which is a process called hemiostasis.